So in the last lesson, we looked at uh, how to how a function uh, executes. We have the argument that we pass to the function, and then the function uses that argument to compute uh, some result, and it returns that result, which we then store inside of a variable. Okay, so I want beginners to understand. Uh, whenever you see a line of code like this one, okay, where we call a function, I want you to understand that uh, it's in a way substitution. Okay, so I, I draw a line through the function call to remind myself that actually what's happening is this function call is actually being replaced with the answer of 4. Okay, so the function returns the value of 4 which is then stored inside my results variable. So I always think of it that way. Function does a job, returns an answer, which replaces the function call. Okay. Now, um, I want to move and talk about the idea of a function prototype. So, there are many instances, um, and we've seen it uh, previously, where we write the function above main. Okay, so currently we are doing this. Okay, we are doing this. We have the function that we create first, then the main function. In many instances, and in the real world um, we don't want to do that okay we prefer to write our functions underneath or below the main function okay so we want to write our function below okay below so we want main first and then we want to put the function underneath now this is what we want because it gives us the ability to write more functions underneath without having to be moving main around all right now but this 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 leads to a problem though and that problem is the compiler expects that when it sees a function call that the function would have already been created above it but in this instance the function is below main not above main and so the compiler will complain it will say you have not created a function called here of square where is it now how do we fix this well it's quite straightforward we bring up the idea or we, discuss, we use the idea of a function prototype which is very straightforward all we do is to say that the function will be declared or created sorry later okay so it's quite straightforward we put only the function uh, signature the return type name parameter list followed by a semicolon once we do that the compiler will stop throwing that error message okay so let's um let's look at that okay so i'm going to come back to my uh, function okay and i will make this change I'm going to take it okay. I'm going to put it underneath okay and it's going to generate an error all right and so this is the error you must recognize error of square was not declared in this scope 
it has no idea what I am talking about. How do you fix this? Simple. We create a function prototype. So I come up here and I simply say double the return type, the name of the function, area of square, and the parameter list. Double, let's say a side of square. And importantly, followed by a semicolon. Okay, save that. That's all we need to do to let the compiler not complain anymore. So what we're saying on line four is, this is a function that I will write the body later. That's it. Let's recompile. And the compiler is not happy. And so if we run it, it works as expected. So going forward, uh, we want to write our functions this way. Step one, create the, proto uh, the function prototype. We have our main, and then later on, under main, we create the actual functions. That's a pattern that we will follow in this course. Okay? Great, so if I switch back, okay, All right? So again, um, let me read from the slides, All right? Sometimes it's not convenient to always define the function before calling it in main. All right, so instead we indicate that we will define the function later using a function prototype, which I just showed you. If we do not include a function prototype, the compiler will complain about the function being missing or not defined, like we saw. All right, and so obviously um, we had it this way and the compiler threw an error. And all we had to do was to put a function prototype. Of course, this is a different function, by the way, right? Um, and then we declare or create the function uh, later. That's it. Okay, that's it. Okay. So, again, um, and by the way, I've switched examples. I, I hope you realize that. I'm no longer using area of square. I'm using a, a messenger uh, function, okay? All right, so I have the prototype. I call it, and then I create it later. All right, good. Now, um, I want to discuss again uh, what we did with Python Tutor. So I'm just gonna sort of illustrate it with arrows. So whenever you call a function, um, control jumps to that function. So notice the arrow. We jump to the void, uh, sorry, the messenger function, okay? And then when you're finished, we jump back to the line of code under the function call, okay? So we don't return back to messenger, we return back to um, the line below that, okay? And so that's it, all right? So step one, the function is called. So terminology time. Whenever uh, we call a function, okay, uh, whoever does the calling is called the callee. So in programming, we say callee. So in this case, main is the callee. Oh, sorry, 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 uh, let me take that back. Let me, let me back backtrack. Um, main is the caller, okay? And the function being called is the callee, okay? So um, 
after the callee, which in this case is the messenger, uh, finishes executing, it returns to the function that called it, which is main. And main is called the caller. Right? Just a bit of terminology. Caller, callee. Okay. Great. So um, we leave this here. Okay, but to practice, what you can do is to write a function uh, named messenger that is void. Okay, and uh, it does not have any parameters. However, it uh, returns uh, or it prints the message "You are awesome." Okay. All right. So. This is what it should look like um, in terms of the code, right? This is what it should look like, okay? And so I want you to actually implement this. So open a, create a new project and uh, write the code, compile it, and execute it to make sure it works. Okay, in the next lesson, we're gonna jump into function patterns, um, simply meaning that, um, the function prototype uh, can follow certain patterns, okay? And so we want to investigate those patterns because in your programming career, these will be the patterns that you'll be using over and over. So you must master them. I'll see you in those upcoming videos.